with two weeks remaining until rebound and the first CPP event for the Lioness Live brand. We welcome you tonight to ACL Lioness Live Episode 2. I'm Chloe James at your service for this evening. And ladies and gentlemen, tonight we have quite the night in store for all of you. We do have quite a lot of action with our Lioness Champion being in action later on tonight in your main event against Ruby Rose. However, ladies and gentlemen, the big event of the evening is not going to be that, but a massive interview between Asuka Langley Soryu and Hit Kid Worldwide. Of course, all of that and much more right here tonight, here on Lioness Live. And with quite, with quite the opener right here tonight as, well, you may remember her from the Lion's Den tournament, but she has definitely changed up her look a little bit. It's Roxy Richter right here tonight in your opening contest. One of the highlights of the Lion's Den tournament, making a huge impact and breaking through into the second round. Breaking, unfortunately not making it past the quarterfinals, however, but making a huge impact in the process of it all. Roxanne Richter tonight looking to make a major impact in her first match of the Lions of the Lioness roster. But speaking of her opponent, it's one that may be a bit of a surprise to everyone as it's a new signee to the Lioness division. You made her the face and you made her the name. Ladies and gentlemen, Catch has arrived. You may know her as the rival of one She-Ra in UCWL, but here, but here tonight, ladies and gentlemen, making her ACL debut. Definitely someone who is ready and willing to make a huge statement right here tonight in the opening contest, especially in our debut match of the night. And putting it very bluntly here tonight, ladies and gentlemen, it is going to be a huge contest between all involved in this. Especially given what we may have in store for you all later on tonight. This is definitely going to be an interesting opener for those who know of Roxanne Richter. For those who know of Catra's style as well, outside of wrestling, she has definitely made herself known. But here tonight, is she going to make a huge impact in her debut? Only one way to find out, ladies and gentlemen. And here we go, both women meet her in the middle of the ring, and Catra already being flung right, to the, right down to the map right there by Roxanne Richter. And Roxy picking her right back up, going right back to the assault by Catra. Oh, and Catra definitely letting out a more vicious side in her opening in her opening shots of the match right here. And of course, not afraid to get down and dirty with the cat scratches right there to the back. Definitely making a huge statement right here tonight. But my gosh, in the opening minutes of this match is already going back and forth between the both of them. And Roxanne being flung right into those ropes, narrowly dodging Catra's drop pick, but did not manage to drop out of that Hurricane Rana, ladies and gentlemen. And of course, Roxanne Richter not not one to get up to be afraid to get down and dirty either. I mean, this is a supposed ninja we're talking about here, and somebody who is definitely not afraid to get right down when necessary, but Katra flinging her right into the corner and just practically begging for Roxy to bring her more of that action, ladies and gentlemen. But I think the big question on everyone's mind is, is she actually going to be able to get the upper hand? I mean, you can definitely tell Katra's already not exactly having the best or having one of those best moments in the opening minutes. 
And now Roxy taking advantage of it once again. Pick it up, Ro Roxy picking up Catra again. And now Catra suffering for the consequences of that. And Roxy going right back on the assault once again. Catra in her debut, not going all that well. Not going all that well at all, ladies and gentlemen. But can she survive that much? And a flying elbow drop from the top of the rope right there by Roxanne Richter. But Catra ducking under and getting a close eye for good measure, now taunting her at that. Taunting her now and ducking under and giving her a good old close line for good measure. And just feeling herself, just feeling it in herself right here and now. And once again, going for it. Here we go. Frankensteiner, just like that with a Frankensteiner right there onto Roxy Richter. And Katra was seemingly getting an opening there, but Roxy not allowing that opening to get any further than a second. And Katra with a dropkick right to the outside. That style is definitely giving her the advantage, and no, she flung herself over the rope, but didn't get anything but concrete onto the, but got nothing but the padding right there on the outside. And Katra going to the outside now, goes to the outside, what on earth is she thinking here? Oh, and a springboard dropkick right there from the outside. And that crossbody of those shots, Right there with those rights and lefts. Katra definitely maintaining the advantage right here. But how long is it going to last for? And now setting up. Setting up Roxy near those ropes now. Getting her near those ropes here. And oh my gosh. Oh no, this ain't looking good. Katra sizing it up. And oh my gosh. Knee just... With that vicious knee right into those ropes, right to her head, into that, into those ropes, and oh my God! End of heartache. One, two. End of heartache, just like that, and it did not even get. It barely got that two count. It barely got that two count. And Katra going right back into it again, thinking that if she can keep the assault up, she might possibly be able to get the win right there. And no Katra denying Roxy those elbows again, denying those elbows again. And oh! Talk about eye for an eye going for those rope hug. Rope hug just like that. But of course it might already be in a bad position. Elbows all oh, with those kicks to the head. Kicks to the head not looking good for Catra right now. Roxy I think is faking for the pounce right here. If she can set up the pounce, Catra might be in danger right now. There we go, she's looking to set it up right now for the pounce. And that might be it for Katra right there. That might be it for Katra. She may be down and out after that pounce. Barely anyone. That's how she got through the Lion's Den tournament. One, two. And Katra, with as much energy as she can muster, manages to get a kick out just like that. And now, Scoop Slam and Katra down, and Roxy's back in motion. Going right back onto it again. And Katra once again in trouble. Oh, and a splash from the top, going for the pin. One, two. Once again, Katra on the offensive, unable to get a major defense into play, but only managing to get that offense right from there. And 
Roxy is just taking advantage of it right now, setting her up onto those ropes. And wait a minute, oh no, she gets this. Catra may already be in danger. Oh God, she got guillotined. And then getting her knees, putting her knees onto the back of Catra. And now, Roxy may be looking to end it all right here and now, but no, Katra gets out the way, gets out of the way, and now Katra looking, no, Roxy getting out of it again, and no, Roxy setting it up, oh, and face planting her down for the back, face planting her down for the back, and now Roxy back in position, going for this combination of strikes, Right there onto Catra. Fishing up with a damn good drop kick at that. But wait a minute, those kicks of fury. Those by furious kicks right there. By! By Roxy Richter, but no! Just gun stunning her just like that onto those ropes. And Roxy just begging for Catra to get back up. Practically begging for her to get back up to her feet just so she can knock her back down again one more time. But no catch up. Not allowing it. Crossbody onto those punches again. Crossbody onto those punches one more time. Going right back for it again. And now Catra trying as much as she possibly can to keep it out. And going for that pin now after that. One, two. And Katra almost had her. Katra almost had her. And now Roxy just putting it just going back into it again, realizing that Roxy was able to get back up of it, and Katra is fuming. Katra is just fuming right now. And now going for that top rope slash of one, two. And once again, Katra nearly got a three. Nearly got a three count. Going into the corner now, once again. Getting set up one more time for the pounce. Go for the pounce. Went and just delivered it, signed and sealed one more time. One, two, three. And as Roxanne Richter just mocks over the body of Catra just like that, she picks up one impressive victory tonight. And while Catra may have had a hard, had to learn the hard way that not all matches end in victory, tonight she definitely did get a masterclass in the ring against one of the most hardest hitting of the division. Nevertheless, congratulations to Roxanne Richter here tonight and welcome Catra the Lioness Division. Sometimes it ain't all sunshine and roses, but right here tonight, Roxanne Richter proved to everyone that she was most certainly the better woman tonight. The scars from the last year or so are still fresh in my mind. But every time I am reminded of what I have been through in order to get this far, I look at the belt I hold within my hands and tell myself, every single choice mattered. Even if I still feel guilt over what I did to Ellie, I can't look back. I can only move forward as your Solar Star Champion. And look forward I must as I have a tough opponent waiting for me in two weeks at rebound, Jackie Briggs. Jackie, 
I'm aware of your family history. I know of what a tough gal you are. But that don't mean nothing to someone who's been through hell and back and came back grinning through a blood-soaked mess to tell the tale. You may be tough. Hell, we may be two of the toughest women in this division. But when you face off against me, you better be prepared to make one tough choice after another. Because every single morality choice I will make will sting more than any of your bombs and make you beg worse than any of your stretches. In two weeks, Jackie, you may be war ready, but this is one battle not even a war machine like you can stand to beat. And that's just a fact you'll need to accept. And strong words for the num for the current Solar Star Champion Clementine, especially made to Jackie Briggs just before our commercial break there, ladies and gentlemen. But we welcome you back to Lioness Live. As we are once again getting set for one hell of a contest to be made here tonight. As another new member of the Lioness Division makes her debut right here tonight. Once again, another member from the Lion's Den Tournament. And one of the more harder hitting and more breakout stars of that night is the Scandinavian Samurai of the UAA, it's Holly Summers. Now Holly Summers tonight, she's proven in the past that she is definitely a hard hitter. Remember her, remember the women that she beat in the Lion's Den tournament. Miu and Ruba was definitely one of them, a major hard hitter right there. It took five of those Harakiris right to the head in order to keep Miu and Ruba down. But keep her down, she did in order to get the win. But to put it bluntly, ladies and gentlemen, Holly Summers definitely has that killer instinct in her. And once again tonight, in her debut match for the Lioness Division, will be making one hell of an impact right here tonight against one of the most vicious and one of the most, honestly, one of the most decorated women in the Lioness Division, but also one of the most vicious and at times most demonic of the Lioness Division. Former Lioness Champion in her own right, and this could be a huge win for Holly Summers if she gets this win here tonight. And the laughs and screams of the arena, the bell tolls for thee. It could be only one woman who has been in the division since day one. It's Rena Ryugu. Rena Ryugu over the last year has definitely kept a lower profile given the fact that she was last, her last big year was back in 2019 when she was at the centerpiece of the Yandere feud. But here tonight, making her return for the first time in a very long time, the Envoy of Oyashiro 
as she was previously called in a past life as the member of Yandere. Tonight makes a reappearance right here tonight in a big, big way. Like I said, one of the most decorated women in the Lioness division, one of the, the four, one of the longest reigning Lioness champions in company history, one of the big, one of the longest running members of the Lioness division at that. But at the same time, she definitely has had a variable history in the division for good and for bad. And ladies and gentlemen, underway already. Holly Summers keeping her distance. She has probably done her hard work on Renner Ryugu and knows for a damn fact to keep her distance in the opening minutes because of how vicious she can be. Smart tactic on the part of Holly Summers and that is putting it very lightly. And now Renna! Renna teaching her, for better or for worse, that she was right to keep her distance the first time around. Because now, she's going to get a first class lesson in how Renna Ryuku operates. Click like that. And now going for that, going right for the legs. Renna having done her hard work as well, going right for those legs. Trying to weaken down those legs of Holly Summers. Knowing damn well she can weaken her down at those legs. She will be incapacitated. Well, not necessarily incapacitated but she will be kept stunted in this match because her legs, those legs of Holly Summers are the hardest hitting parts of her body. That's saying a lot given how hard hitting Holly Summers can really be. We're seeing it right here and now with that, those punches going back and forth. And of course, Renna, having been a hard-hitting opponent in the past, knows exactly how to counteract that. But Holly, on the other hand, going right for those strikes, going for a power bomb right there! Power bomb right the hell out of nowhere, right there on Renna Ryugu. And now, Northern Light Suplex at a one, two. And Holly already getting close to Renna Ryugu going down for the count just like that. And this is the thing about Holly Summers taking advantage of those legs, putting a big, putting a big footnote as it were on to Renna's body just like that. And those kicks, no Renna getting denied for those kicks as well. No, Renna stopping Holly just like that. Flipping her down just like that and going right for the arm. Not necessarily a smart play, but a backhand right there by Renna Ryugu. Definitely keeping her in a good headspace for where we are right now in this match. Rope, slingshot. Rope, slingshot. Right there, and laying Holly down on her back, and now going right for a reverse drag, going for a reverse sleeper hold just like that, and now Holly breaking out of it. Northern Lights again, right there by Holly Summers, already maintaining an advantage. One, only a one count that time. Kick right to the back, Holly not. Really letting up on Renna and going right for the head. Going right for the head, knowing damn well. Knowing damn well. Oh! Harakiri, no hesitation. One, two. Only a two count right there by Holly Summers. Only a two count. Elbow right to the belly of Holly Summers and no close line. Sending Renna out to the outside and practically calling for Holly to get right back in. And Renna almost out of her backside suplex, but German suplex denies her for that.
And Polly Summers getting right down and dirty right there. Getting right down into it with Renner Uger now. Renner not allowing even a moment. But of course, Holly definitely not accounting for the fact that Renner has had years of experience and Holly's only had a couple months compared to her. And now Renner finding that opening, going for the assault right there to Holly in the corner now, going for that close line and following it up with that Bulldog is for good measure. And now wait a minute, setting it up. I have all your Shiro! I have all your Shiro! One, two. Only a two count. Only a two count right there by, by Retta onto Holly. And Retta realizing she may only have one chance in order to put Holly Summers away. If she can hit this, it may be game, set, match. Holly may be in danger, but wait a minute, the rope. Foot under the ropes. Retta miscalculating her position, and as a result of that, Holly Summers taking the advantage again. And now, looking to go for it one more time. Setting up front of Ryuga for a second Harakiri. Lifting her head up into position, and then hitting that Harakiri right to the head. And that killer blow may have ended Rana Ryugu tonight. And Rana Ryugu kicked out of two of those Harakiris. Kicked out of those two Harakiris. Kicked out of two of them. And now, Holly Sub is trying desperately to weaken her down, but Rana pulling as much strength as she possibly can. Practically telling Holly if she gets back in, it's game over. Practically telling her it could be about to be game over for her. But I think Holly is willing to call her bluff right here and now. Shoving her to the outside. And then flinging her right back in. Kick right to the back. And Rena once again trying to find. Trying however she can in order to find that opening once again. And now, slingshot off the ropes and into the Falcon Arrow. Kick right to the back one more time. And now, wait a minute. Renna with that Dragon Sleeper, wearing down on Holly Summers. Wearing down slowly onto Holly Summers with that Dragon Sleeper. Holly managing to keep herself in the position and gets out of it. There's four arms in that uppercut. Renna not looking good right now, but she needs to find a way to capitalize and quick. Needing to find a way to capitalize off of that and quick, but she may possibly have got it here. With a rope hug face smash right there into the ground. And now, Wait a minute, Renna from out of nowhere, one more time, one more time with level 5 Hidamizawa Syndrome. Hidamizawa Syndrome and nowhere to turn for Holly and she kicks out. Holly Summers kicking out tonight. Holly Summers tapping out tonight. But goddamn was this a damn fine encounter between these two men, between these two women right here tonight. But I'll tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, this was a huge match and then some for those involved. And especially for those that managed to put out, especially for Holly Summers pulling out as much as she possibly could. As much as she possibly could. But right over you tonight did not to back out. But I will say this. I will say this. Holly Summers made a huge, a huge encounter tonight. 
and that's being completely honest. But ladies and gentlemen, we're about to get set for a massive highlight of the evening. Taking it into the middle of the ring for Hit Kid Worldwide as we clear out this ring pretty quickly. Hit Kid Worldwide, take us away for this interview. Ladies and gentlemen, you all know me. You all know this face and voice by now. My name is Hit Kid Worldwide. Yes, I'm here tonight. And I'm here in this ring to not do my usual job, which will be behind that commentary desk. No, instead I'm here tonight, ladies and gentlemen, to give an interview with one of the newest members of the Lioness Division and quite literally most loved members. So you know what? I'd rather not be here any longer than I need to be. So let's get this on. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome at this time the winner of the 2020 Lions Den Tournament. Yes, I'm doing this against my own well-being and intentions. Ladies and gentlemen, the German genius, Asker Langerly Sorio. To say that this interview was highly anticipated by many would be an understatement. Especially given her actions at the draft, she has a lot to atone for. She has a lot to answer for right here tonight, if you ask me personally. It is the winner of the Lions Den 2020, the German genius, Asuka Langley Sorian. Asuka Langley Sorian tonight. Definitely has a lot to answer to these fans for, and definitely has a lot to answer to Hit Kid Worldwide right here tonight as well, especially given the circumstances. But the look on her face really doesn't read as a woman who's apologetic. It really doesn't read as a woman who knows exactly what she's put herself in for right now. And it doesn't read as someone who came in here ready to basically just say, I'm sorry. If you personally ask me, I get the feeling that whatever the hell is going to happen in the middle of the ring tonight, I'm glad that Hicken Worldwide signed that waiver saying that we're not liable for what happens in the ring, because let's be blunt. Getting in the ring with the woman that practically shelved the, the top ace of the Lioness division, the longest reigning Lioness champion, the Avatar Korra. Let's put it bluntly here tonight. This is not going to be a very kind war of words between these two here tonight. It's going to be a very, very bloody affair in terms of words. So there's no beat around the bush. Let's take it to the ring and let's get this underway. Oscar, I'm not here to waste people's time and all that shit. So let's get right to it. What in the bloody hell was that back at the draft to Cora? Well, if you knew anything about what you were sent out here to do, you British buffoon, you'd already know your answer. But, given everyone in this industry is too rock stupid to read between the lines, let me be blunt about it. I did it to make a point. And the point is that women like Cora, who have been hogging the spotlight for years, are the reason why women like myself haven't been able to break the supposed glass ceiling everyone keeps goddamn talking about. And for what? So that we can become the next meal for some big shot to come and snuff us out? Spare me! Cora is no better than Ryuko Hinomatos, Sakura Higawaras, Juliet Starling, Sailor Moons, Elizabeth Parisas, and especially the Cameron Corteses of this industry. Nothing more than a bunch of expired women's wrestlers whose relevancy expired years ago, yet somehow still managed to weasel their way back into the spotlight no matter what. All because they crave it. They feel like they deserve it. What bullshit. 
And besides, I did the world a favor by ridding you all of that avatar. Didn't you especially have an issue with her, hey kid? Yeah, it was well open. Me and Cora had issues for years. And I'm not going to take that back. Me and Cora, it was well public, our blow-ups and our arguments and everything. So since we're doing away with the questions here and just getting into this, let me ask you, Miss Soryu. What the hell makes what you did to Cora justified by your own meaning or everyone's reactions to what you did? What the hell was the justification behind it, Asuka? <laughs> it's quite simple, Hit Kid. In order to make a true revolution in this business, you don't do it by saying, fuck so-and-so. You don't do it by showing your tits and ass out to the world and calling it liberation. And you don't do it by just having the same old shit happen everywhere you go. You do it by doing what revolutions in the past have done. By cutting the head off of the snakes in charge. And believe me, there is no bigger snake in this league than your precious avatar. You knew it. So many others knew it. And I know so many in the back know it very well. So I ask you again. What makes what I did so bad when everyone was begging for Korra to go away? And yet, when I go ahead and give them all what they want, I'm seen as the bad girl in the situation. I asked you a question, Hit Kid! You know what, you psychotic crazy absolute nut job I don't have an answer for you because quite literally you don't deserve it but let's be honest here still doesn't justify what you did to Cora you're nothing more than a fucking psychopath and honestly Asuka to hell with you to hell with your fucking little ever revolution and quite literally I hope you burn for this I'm out of here. I mean, this sort of ended especially how yeah, we thought it was going exactly to, to be honest. exactly what I thought, you coward! Running away when you've been cornered? Exactly like every other coward in this industry has been. So, since this interview has been abandoned, I may as well use this time to my advantage. I know there are a lot of women in the back who are listening to this right now, so I have a message. A call of arms, if you will, to you all. I know you are all equally sick of the old hags in our division and so many others taking away time from us and not showing what we can do. And I hear you. I know you are all out there in the back, seething for that chance to really make a difference rather than just fade into the back and let them take what's yours. So, if you feel like you're ready to truly show those hags, those leeches, and truly show this division and this entire industry what a true revolution looks like, then I have one thing to say to all of you. Join me. I mean, this ended up going exactly how we thought it was going to. But those last words... What the hell is Asuka Langley Sori planning here?
Touching myself tonight. And we are back here tonight here on Lioness Live. And to put it very bluntly, it is now time for our main event of the evening. But my gosh, ladies and gentlemen, what a chaotic evening it has been tonight. Sure, we've had some really good matches here tonight. We've definitely had some pretty good ones at that. But, it cannot be stated that tonight was definitely, one way or another, a very, very chaotic evening. Especially for what we saw before the commercial break, ladies and gentlemen. That interview... That interview... May haunt me. And personally speaking, it may haunt this division well and truly into this year and that is just frightening to be honest given those words that she said but here comes our lioness champion the big dog of the division The big dog of the division, the Arcadia Bay Killer, Chloe Price, has entered the building. Putting it very, very bluntly, ladies and gentlemen, this is a big time encounter for the. This is a big time encounter for both women, especially. For Chloe Price, this, this is her first match since becoming Lioness Champion here in the division. So tonight is definitely going to be a big test to see if she can fit the shoes of the division's head. Put it bluntly here tonight, however, ladies and gentlemen, it is going to be a massive encounter for Ruby Rose as well as she faces off against the current Lioness champion. Given her history with that belt and given who is going to be facing off against her for that belt at rebound, it's going to be a massive opportunity for her definitely, but it is also going to be a massive challenge for Chloe Price going into that match. Because we all know for a fact that now it is set Chloe Price will be facing off against Yang Xiaolong for the Lioness Championship at rebound in her first defense of the belt. And if we know for a fact that Ruby Rose is definitely probably going to be wanting to soften up Chloe Price ready for that match, it is definitely going to be one hell of a match between these two right here tonight. But Chloe Price, as we're seeing, is no slouch in the ring. She has not gotten that much ring rust. As we all know, she is not only the Lioness Champion, she is also the current one half of the DCA Wildcats Tag Team Champions. And to put it very astaciously, you need to take into account that with that in mind, she is repping for two high-profile divisions in one go and only managed to get a one count from that spine buster right there. Chloe Price kicking out of it just like that. Flinging Ruby into the corner and a face plant once again down into the middle of the ring. Going right for those punches right to the skull just like that. Chloe Price definitely going right back to it again. Look at the weaken her down right at the head and then some. Look at the weaken her down right at the head and then some. Possibly trying to maintain a heavy advantage, but no! Put stop at the top of the roof and deny. Now a 
into the corner. Bowie setting up. Ruby Rose at the top right there. And an Inziguri right there into position. Now, no. But stop denied again. Ruby Rose in the middle of the ring. Waiting for her. Connor running up. Running up with that Connor just like that. One. Only a one count. Only getting a one count. And Ruby Rose practically Ruby Rose practically trying to keep up the momentum but can't stop gluting definitely cannot stop gluting when it, when it appropriately and a shot gun knees right into the corner their shotgun knees right into the corner now and oh using the leverage of those ropes to her advantage to let loose with those flying feet right up there and now Going up to the top of the rope, is she already going to put the finishing touch? Mosh Pit Dive Denied. Mosh Pit Dive Denied. But not only that, she might not be in the best position. Wearing down on that leg. Only getting a one. Only getting a one after all of that. Definitely a very hard-fought battle so far between the three of them, between the two of them, especially given the, given each of these women's history in the ring. And Ruby Rose already going right for it again. DDT and her just like that with a rope hug DDT. Now picking her up one more time. Holy crap. Chloe Price getting right out of it. Oh! Setting her right back down again. And going for those kicks right to the skull. Going for the pin, however. One. Only a one count on to Ruby Rose. Trying to, trying to just apply pressure right to that head, but Ruby Rose getting out of it again. This is where the skill difference between the two of these may come into play a lot sooner than you think. Because Ruby looks about ready to absolutely demolish Chloe just like that. And now going for it again, setting it up, and oh! Off the ropes, and then just treading all over her head. Treading all over her head just like that. And now Ruby setting her up one another for she got planned for Chloe. Oh, setting her right to the outside. Setting her right to the outside again. And Grant going fly. Red going fly and then some. And then Ruby taking full advantage of the situation right here and now. Now looking to bring her right back in, going for the head onto that apron, and oh, smashing it right down onto that apron now. And Ruby Rose definitely taking the advantage right here and now. Definitely continuing to maintain that advantage. And Wait a minute, is Chloe Price setting it up right there? No! Rachel's Revenge denied! But immediately getting the kick out, Price immediately getting the kick out just like that. You can see the frustration, you can just tell the frustration on the champ's head right now as she continues to be unable to get a single major hit on to the challenger right here for Ruby Red Snipe! One, two! Only a two count. Only a two count. And no, wait a minute. Little bit of her sister's influence with that right hook to the head. I think maybe 
Ruby Rose had that intentionally in place, specifically to mess with her just like that. And now going for it middle, going for the middle ropes, 450. Middle rope, 450, just like that. And now going for the pin one more time. One, two. And Chloe Price kicks out of it one more time. Kicking out of it one more time. And now going for it again. Going for that assault again. And stomping down right into the chest. Stomping down right into that chest and then some right now. And you can tell Ruby Rose is just getting to that point of frustration in her own self at this point. But no! Price, reverse it out of it. Ruby kicking out of it again. Oh! Forward flip right into that kick. Going up to the top again. Going up to the top rope one more time. And Ruby sees her moving. And no. And is she going for it again? Is she going for it one more time? If she hits this, she the champ may be done. And no. Done and dusted. Not yet. Price is back up one more time. No. Twist the fate denied. Was to face denied again. One, two. One. And now going for it again, but Chloe gets out of it. We was telling her, fuck you for everything. And going right for it again. Going for the assault right there onto Rose. And now setting her back down. And this could be where the champ takes control back into this match. We should be about to take control back here in this match. Twist of Fate seals it. Connects that Twist of Fate just like that. But once again, Ruby Rose going right back to the well one more time. And Ruby could be about to seal the deal. No! And Ruby gets back into it. Bottom rope, 450, setting it down again. And that's it. That is it. That might be it. One, two. And no, not yet. And she gets right back up again. She could be about to do it one more time. Setting her into place. Setting up Ruby Rose for Rachel's revenge. Going for the pin. One, two. And Ruby Rose somehow manages to get out of Rachel's revenge. Going for those shots to the head. Price is fuming right now. Price is absolutely living at this right now. Reversing out with that body splash right there onto Rose. And now Price getting right back up again. Setting her into the corner one more time. And she knows exactly what she's... No! Ruby Rose getting out of it again. Ruby Rose gets out of it again. But Price not allowing her to go down. No! Barreling into her denied. Irish whipping her into the ropes and barreling into her. Bryce may almost have her number right here tonight. And if she can, what on earth is she thinking here? Go for the arm. Oh my God. Arm trap into the ropes. Elbow drops, springboard onto the outside tonight. Bryce catches the leg, sweeping her down just like that. And now, once again, going for the corner again. 
Once again going for that corner. And now, is she thinking of it? Is she thinking of going for it? Shotgun knee smashes into the corner. Drop kick. Comboing her just like that. And if Christ hits this, she may have the ticket to win it here tonight. Mosh pit dive! One, two, three. And Chloe Price managing a huge, huge win tonight. Now going that right here tonight, especially after the masterclass performance that Ruby Rose put into just going the distance against her and then some. It says it all. It says it all tonight. But for someone like Chloe Price right here tonight, it's only the beginning because she knows exactly she knows exactly what's ahead of her at rebound, and tonight was most definitely going to be a message directly to Yang Xiaolong and then some. Then come the time at rebound, she is ready for whatever may be coming for her on that night. But hey, wait a minute! Yang Xiao Long from out of nowhere. After the match that she just went through assaulting the champion Chloe Price right here tonight. Showing no mercy against her opponent at rebound. Showing off right here tonight with a golden glove KO right to the face of Chloe Price right here tonight and a knee smash right to the head. Going for those shots again, but Price is having none of it. Price is having absolutely none of it right to the head. But Price going back and forth onto Yang, telling her, you want some of this? You better come correct with that. And really, Price has every reason to fight off against Yang right here tonight, because she's already had to fight off against her sister, or half-sister at that. But my god, ladies and gentlemen, Yang is definitely taking it right to Chloe Price right here tonight. Right to the head, going for those strikes into the corner again. Not letting up on the Lioness champion one bit right here tonight. Going right for it again, barreling right into Yang. Sweeping at that leg again. Going right up top. And now, setting it up. Shao Long Buster. Shao Long Buster just like that. Right there onto Chloe Price. Oh! Gonna go around the head of a Shao Long Bomber as well. I really should not be condoning this right now, but this is exactly what Yang Shao Long is like, and this is really what we should be expecting for an opponent for Chloe Price at that. Because let's be clear about this. Chloe Price is willing to put herself through anyone in order to keep herself at the top. But in two weeks, is she going to be prepared for Yang Shao Long ready or not, is she going to be ready for this?